Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Vegas Pro 18, and we're gonna talk about some new tips that I've been collecting for another Quick Tips video. As you're trying to decide what videos you want to edit with, you might want to look through them first. If you add the video to the trimmer beforehand, it doesn't actually add it to your project media. So you could look at something, decide you don't want to actually edit with this one. You could hit the X, get rid of it. Nothing in your project media, so you don't get it all messy. So it's great if you're looking through a lot of different things and you're trying to figure out which one you want to import. You can just kind of slide through it real quick, find out, and hit X when you don't want it. When you do want something, uh, all you have to do is, let's say, I want this clip here. And I want to, all I'm doing is dragging from a, a window, by the way. If I can add it to the timeline or uh, I can create a sub clip this is covered in my trimmer tutorial if you want to know more about that check out that tutorial create sub clip it's gonna name it whatever I can name it whatever I wanted to now that little piece of it is now a sub clip and both this and the sub clip are in my project media for the next tip sometimes when you're trying to add a font I'm gonna hit control shift and Q to add another track there you go that's a tip too uh, can control Q just adds a video track so two keyboard shortcuts for you there um, if I'm adding text to something what I can do is go to media generators grab uh, titles and text and if I grab sample text throw it on here uh, a lot of people are wondering like how to kind of preview your text if you want this to be a different font what you need to do is highlight it and uh, while you're selecting fonts instead of just clicking through one at a time you can actually have this down and this while this is highlighted and this is opened you can hit the arrow key and you can visualize each text as you go there we go and kind of quickly get a read out of what text you're gonna want that's just a down arrow key let's say we want to motion track this just to kind of figure out what the camera shake is and match it so uh, to do that motion track a lot of times what you would do is just go to the video effect motion track click and drag it onto here select uh, the thing you want to track and usually at some point of high contrast uh, and then you can right click the clip after you're done with that open motion tracking and then you can create the motion track. The problem is though, as you're trying to find this, this motion track, sometimes you don't have enough detail to really, to really kind of get what you want. And a way to increase that detail for a better motion track is you can actually go to Project Media, I'm sorry, go to Video Effects, Unsharp Mask, this little tool keeps coming in handy. Uh, you can go to Light Unsharp Mask, get everything looking just a little bit sharper artificially so but you can see quickly there you get this sharpening effect throughout the whole video so that soft haze of the background gone and now everything's got nice hard edges you might want to keep it you might not want to keep the unsharp mask on but you want to put it before the motion tracker and then when you track motion you might have a little bit better of a result because it has more detail to look at uh, more hard edges on uh, the items that you're looking at help it distinguish the detail for the motion track. So another quick tip, they've just changed the motion track uh, and it's not in my motion track tutorial, but if you wanted to apply this motion track that I did, if you wanted to apply it to, let's not do perspective, let's just do location, to this sample text, then um, you would actually have to have this selected, grab this trigger, click and drag it to the text, and then what you want to do is just hit location, and now the text should match the location of the fence pole. See how it kind of moves around with it. It just depends on what you're trying to track, but if you ever just need more detail and you're thinking maybe I could just add the unsharp mask and get a better track, you probably can. So as you're editing, you might find you have a few different things going on, and you might want to jump to another segment to reference something, or whatever the reason. If you uh, hit 
M on your keyboard, wherever your cursor is, it'll create a marker. You can even name this marker place or whatever you want to name it. And uh, if you ever want to get back to that spot, you can just hit one on your keyboard and it will jump to the first marker there. So that way you can quickly kind of toggle between different sections of your edit, which is especially helpful if your timeline starts getting into the hour range. Let's say you wanted to close the gaps between things in your project. You could really right click on the timeline itself and just hit close gaps. A lot of people doesn't know that exists. And so if you have like lots and lots and lots of little pieces of stuff everywhere, very simply heal your timeline back up very fast. So if, if you've like went through and you've done an edit but you didn't have auto ripple on, if you don't know what auto ripple is, I highly recommend you check out that tutorial. Um, but if you didn't have auto ripple on, you want to close all those gaps, you don't have to manually go back through and do it. You just close the gaps. A couple of things that people don't know about the media generation window here. So when we open this up, uh, there's a lot of options and a lot of people know all of these options and how to keyframe all these options. But one thing people don't realize is that you can actually keyframe the text. So I can hit animate right here and uh, it'll say sample text there. But if I go to the two second mark, I can create a new keyframe or it'll just create one as soon as I make a change sample text and I can add the word to. And then here, a few seconds later, I can just make it say something new. And then here, I can make it say new, new, new. And then uh, let's watch it back. And I'll say all sorts of different stuff because I have keyframed and some changes, sample text too. Please check out my You're Doing Text Wrong tutorial because it's got tons more examples of how to uh, better use text. But this is just another tool in your tour belt for uh, making text change over time. You can even do this with uh, fonts as well. So now you'll, if I scroll through here, you can see it's one font and then it jumps to another font and then back to the original font. So it just makes hard changes between the text by just clicking that animation title there and doing standard keyframing. You might think, okay, I need more time because it starts looping back at um, 10 seconds or so. Uh, if you need more time, you can actually go up here to this duration and you can make this uh, 30 seconds long before it loops back. And then now you can drag this out until you hit 30 seconds and then you'll have the loop back notch that shows you you're looping. And you can make that as long as you need to make it. So that helps with animations, all sorts of stuff when you don't want text to loop again. So so that has been some things I've been collecting over time to share with you. If you're looking for more tutorials, I have tons of helpful links in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. I will see you next time.